You know, uh, about a month ago or three weeks ago, I just came back from uh, Samoa. Samoa is a little island above New Zealand, you know, in the South Pacific Island. I was there teaching in the Bible school. The Samoans, uh, they are diaspora. They, 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 they are, you can find them everywhere, all right? Even to the United States, uh, in Australia, in New Zealand, and uh, very different Places, but one thing about the heartbeat of the Samoans is that they want to plant churches, they want to raise up workers, and uh, they want to train more workers so that they can send them into the mission field. That is the heartbeat. I thought uh, that was very, very, uh, very laudable and uh, very encouraging. Uh, the Lord is good, and uh, I was able to meet new friends, uh, new Samoan friends from different uh, parts. You know, praise the Lord. God is a good God. And this time I can be back to Singapore and uh, just nice, uh, we can share the word of God. Now this morning, I'm going to talk to you on the Jesus walk on waters. One of the difficult uh, uh, journey of a preacher uh, is like this. It is very difficult to preach uh, 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 scriptures where you and I in our Christian faith has been hearing this sermon in different preached by different preachers in different ways, and uh, it is difficult to preach something that you have already been hearing and heard of again and again. Well, but this morning, I want to take you through a journey that uh, what you heard from the other preachers, uh, mm, did they really you know, do service to this particular passage that we are about uh, to look into later. And uh, my next slide is uh, the theme of this talk this morning is Jesus walk on waters. And he spoke to the group of disciples on the boat, crossing over from the Sea of Galilee over to the other side of the shore. And this was a word that he said, it is I, be not afraid. This morning, we're going to visit three of the four gospels, the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and John. Uh, Luke did not record this particular incident, so only three gospels. And uh, all the Bible translations, whether it is a Chinese, a European, the Western, or Indian, they have the same story uh, title, Jesus Walk on Waters. I thought, I thought that, that that was a very reasonable, uh, logical uh, 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 understanding for the translator to put this particular caption here. Uh, let me give you, let, let us, uh, uh, you know, in, in my mobile phone that uh, all of you are using, in my mobile phone, you know, my telephone list, I have five Patricks. And sometimes you forgot this Patrick belongs to which Patrick. I'm sh and you have to give the surname or the family name. Or, but I put another name, their job occupation, so I can identify exactly this Patrick belongs to what. So I have a Patrick electrician. Ha. So the electrician is a face to this number. A skin to this number. Then I have another one, plumber. <laughs> plumber to this number. And so by the time I look at all these five Patricks, I have five different uh, wonderful things. Ah, this one is skillful in this area. <laughs> so in this scripture, when the Bible translator ascribe it as uh, Jesus walk on water, is giving us a, a summary of the story line there, and, uh, which is very important. And... Uh, uh, so we need to take a, take a good look that uh, the focus of the message of this scripture, you know, it's not Jesus walk on waters. It's giving you a face to the story. Jesus walk. It's not a focus. If it is a focus, uh, it is like Jesus. <laughs> it, it, Jesus is not coaching the disciples to walk on waters. It's not his purpose on that one, you know. And uh, walking on water is not the message of this passage. 
Otherwise, one criteria to be the disciple of Jesus Christ is every one of you must walk on waters. Then you become my disciple. Wow, that is a tall order. Because some of us here don't swim. <laughs> All right, and, uh, and come along some preachers. They will say that uh, this passage is actually telling us about faith. Remember, one of the writings of Matthew, he says that, that you have little faith. Why you doubt? And so, for one hour, we hear the preaching from this passage. is talking about faith. But was that the message that Jesus wanted to bring across to us? It was rather a rebuke. Peter, you have so little faith. Prior to this walking on water incident, you know, Jesus was feeding the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. And the disciples were involved in, in giving out the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. Jesus was the one who did the multiplication. The disciples were involved. And, and surely, surely uh, 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 the disciples would capture this, uh, this uh, faith encounter. And so some preacher will work on this. Oh, it's teaching about faith, but perhaps it's more of a rebuke. You have just came out from a miracle and then, you know, and so we hear preachers who talk like this. So, and then we have another scripture in Mark. It says that uh, they consider not the miracle of the loaves for their heart was hardened. Their, their spiritual mind was not open at this point in time, you know. So interesting. Another preacher came along and used this passage to teach us on prayer. Does this passage uh, tell us on prayer? Well, Jesus told the disciples, you, you folks go over to the other side. I will come and join you. I want to take some time out to, to spend time praying. Hmm. It's important that you and I, in the busyness of life, we take out time to set aside, to seek the face of the Lord. Not, so all this preacher came along and teach us uh, Nothing wrong with their focus, but is this passage trying to present to us prayer? Another preacher come along. The focus of their preaching is fear focus. The disciples were fearful. They, they were scared. I mean, why not scared? <laughs> you, if you and I are in the boat and the storm came, were you not scared? Let's say we go into one of our HDB, our apartment block, and then we our leave, and then halfway at the 23rd story, the leave hang. And you are inside there, the leave don't move up, don't move down. Don't you feel afraid? This life experience in certain journeys of life, we will constantly have something that scares us, which is true, you know. And then another preacher come along and say that, uh, this story teaches us about control issue. We couldn't control the nature, and now we are at the crux of uh, facing the storm. And uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like a snake. The snake slither on the earth, on the ground. The moment the eagle comes with the talon and pick up the snake, the snake loose is controlled because it's not on earth anymore, hanging in the air in the midway. Some said that Jesus was grief. Well, in the course of feeding the 5,000, John the Baptist was killed. Jesus received the news. You know, and uh, Jesus was grief. And so the great preacher who are expert in the area of counseling used this passage. <laughs> Jesus was grief. He need to spend time alone to unload himself, to give himself space. You know, from time to time, you and I need space in our life. Am I correct? Leave me alone. I just want to take some time out to heal ourselves, which is not wrong. But was this the passage trying to get across to us? And uh, it is so important, so important. There are two types of fear that the disciples uh, you know, exhibited. One, when the ship was about to capsize due to the storm, the first thing that struck them drowned. Hey, all these are seasoned sailors. 
they have gone through some of those rough weathers of life. What, what is drowning to them? The second one is they saw <laughs> a spirit. They saw someone walking on water towards them. And the first thing they shouted out, spirit, in our local language, Kuya! Hantu! Ghosts! Have you seen something like that in your life? The belief of in those days, when you see something that is unnatural, a spirit that comes towards you, it means your life is numbered. You're about to die, the next world, taking you back. We have these Chinese beliefs here. You know. Many years ago, <laughs> this is very incident, very interesting, uh, uh, having the opportunity to travel with an Assemblies of God missionary, you know, visiting the Philippines and... Uh, and uh, we went down to the south. And then we checked into a village hotel. I took one room, he took one room. Halfway in the night, I heard somebody knock on my door. I opened the door. The missionary was standing in front with his pajamas half, half, half worn, you know. And his luggage bag unzipped, you know, pulling all his things together. I said, what happened? He said, Change hotel, change hotel. Let's go to the hotel further down the road. I said, why in the middle of the night? What happened? Oh, while I was sleeping, my bed shifted. Ayo, you are a Pentecostal missionary. You bed shifted. It's a time for you to kill the ghost. About 10 a.m. the next morning, we heard from the news. This morning, we have a very uh, severe, strong earthquake. Shake everything, you know. Well, uh, I'm not so earthquake uh, sensitive. I've been in the Philippines for three years. And sometimes in the class where tremors struck in Manila, you know, I don't feel it. But the Filipino students felt it. And they knew. And uh, they taught us how to observe. First, those days we used chalkboard, blackboard. Chalkboard. The board tilted. I didn't even observe the board tilted. And then the lights shake. Oh, that is called tremors. You know, maybe as a Singaporean, uh, I'm not so sensitive <laughs> to, this, to this thing, you know. So interesting. So interesting. You know, so interesting. And, uh, and I hope the, some of these things are very important. Not only that, I also discovered uh, two types of fear. I also discovered uh, they experienced two miracles. One, Peter walked on waters. And then secondly, the moment Jesus came up on the boat, the boat landed. Is this a hovercraft or what? Speedboat or what? You know, this hand roll. <laughs> There's no motor engine. And so there was an interesting thing for us to observe. And... Uh, it is important this morning we want to see uh, why was this passage recorded in Matthew, Mark, and uh, John, and what would Jesus wants the body of Christ to learn from this passage. Let me start with this uh, Gospel of John. John chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at hand to which they were going. Very interesting, all right? Okay, let's look at Matthew's record. Matthew's writing, he says this. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, fourth watch of the night is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., fourth watch of the night, all right? Uh, uh, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sing, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Let us look at Mark's writing. Mark. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary to them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he comes to them walking upon the sea, and uh, would have passed by them. And when they saw, but when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up to them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. Verse 52, For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. So interesting. Three gospel. What is found in John, it may not be found in Matthew or Mark. What is found in Matthew's writing, it may not be found in John or Mark. What is found in Mark may not be found in Matthew and John. So in these three Gospels, we find that something uh, uh, overlap one another. That's why when we study the Bible or read God's Word, if this passage is repeated in other passages in the Scripture, it's good to bring this Scripture together to, to check with one another and see what was the Lord trying to speak to us in that context. Now, let me give you this. In these three Gospels, this is what Jesus said in John, it is I, do not be afraid. In Matthew, Jesus said, it is I, do not be afraid. In Mark, it says, it is I, do not be afraid. When I was in junior five and six, primary five and primary six, you know, in Singapore education system, primary six is built on primary five. And then primary six, we have PSLE. If you are a school teacher here, or you are a student, you know, Every time when the teacher reiterate and iterate again and again certain thing in, the, in her or his teaching, in exam, this question will come out. In these three gospels, three times it was recorded, it is I, do not be afraid. The message forcefully emerged out of the three gospels writing of Jesus' walk on water is Jesus gave the assurance to his people the church of Jesus Christ, it is I. Do not be afraid. What storms of life will you face? It is not about Peter did not focus on Jesus. That's why he sing. <laughs> Some preacher will come along, which is, I cannot argue with that. You know? But the trust of this passage is Jesus, our great shepherd, speak to our hearts and prompt to us. Give us that confidence. Don't be afraid. It is I. I will not let anything happen in your life without my presence near you. It is I. Do not be afraid. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it is Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 2022, February 25th, about 9.45 a.m. in Singapore. There was a huge, big earthquake in Sumatra. 58 buildings in Singapore were affected by the tremor. I hope you are one of those buildings. 
And even if it's tremor, uh, I'm not sure you are sensitive enough to feel it. You know, uh, Geelang, Marine Parade, they felt it. I think it's scary. I, it is true that the Indonesians, they will be scared because after the Aceh tsunami, they are now very scared every time there is a tremor or an earthquake of whatever magnitude, you know. I mean, if it happens to us in Singapore, why will you not be afraid? It's very natural for us to be afraid. Very natural us to be afraid when we lose our job. When the company gives us a termination letter for no apparent reason, we are afraid. Our rice bowl, we are afraid when our children make mistakes in life. We are afraid when our marriage goes wrong, our relationship goes bad. Who is not afraid of all these things that just knock on your door when you are less prepared for it? Scared. But as believers in Jesus Christ, Jesus is telling us, it is I. Do not be afraid. Hear the shepherd's voice. Hear the good shepherd. He speaks to us. There was one trip I was flying from Manila to Iloilo. And uh, that, that experience, I told myself, no more doing that. Every time when the uh, typhoon passed through Philippines, uh, don't fly. Because the air up there is still very turbulent. They have not settled yet. But I have to go to Iloilo and come back to Singapore on the same weekend. And so the moment you know, I was stuck on the airport, you know, uh, like all the other passengers, no flight. You know, and the moment they announced flight is ready, you know, and all of us queue up and then we took off. Our plane begins to fly from Manila to Iloilo. Somewhere along that journey, there is this sensor underneath the aircraft was knocked out by the turbulence <laughs> of the air and the captain had to intercom and talk to the passenger. I'm sorry, we have to return back to Manila. We cannot land in Iloilo because uh, Iloilo do not have a, 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 a landing a, a guidance system for us to land. And uh, our landing guidance system was knocked out by the, by the wind. And so in Manila, they have a system to guide us down. And uh, maybe I was one of a very few foreigners sitting in the aircraft. It's packed to capacity. And uh, the moment the captain announced this, who is not scared? Anything can happen. One hour journey to Ilodo, now another one hour journey back. And I look around. And my passengers, friends who sat all over, they, really, they are really first class Roman Catholic. They pray and pray. I'm sure they confess all their sins. <laughs> they don't want to be caught unprepared. You now, fear is one of the greatest enemies of man. It brings out the worst in people and makes us do irrational things. Fear. You know, and uh, sometimes fear can even drive us to suicide. You know, Christians, we are also gripped by fear. We are not immune to fear just because we are Christian. If we are not careful about fear, you know, we can commit grievous sin against God. Look at Abraham. Because of fear, he said that my wife is my sister <laughs> in Egypt. <laughs> Terrible. Look at prophet Elijah. He ran for his life from Queen Jezebel, instead of trusting God to deliver him, look at King Saul. I'm not, look at uh, 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 King Saul. He was coerced under duress by the people that he went to do sacrifice and worship God, which this area of domain belongs to the priest and the prophet. Look at Peter. Because of fear, he denied Jesus three times. You know, when we are caught in something, we do irrational things. It's just human. Seeing what fear can do to the best of God's servant, 
it's important that we learn how to respond to fear in the right manner. The next time things become so strange and hit you, remember this story. Jesus walked on water. It is I. Do not be afraid. The calmness of the words. I think words and the tone and the way it's presented is so important. I have a lady friend who works in Cathay Pacific, first class. And she said, as a first class stewardesses and stewards, we are sent for training to speak in such a tone to calm down first class passengers. You know, first class passengers paid a lot, you know. So they must have first class treatment. And their tone went down to certain numbers of decibel. You don't know, right? Many of you travel on budget airline. The air stewardesses and steward, Hoi, sit down! Score you! But you go first class, they cannot do that. You have to talk in such a way to unnerve you, calm you down. Very interesting. Voices. <laughs> interesting thing. God's word helps to respond well to fear. So the more you know God's word, the more the word of God calms you down. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. Whenever you feel afraid and your heart is gripped with fear, ask. You know, don't throw away your fear. Jesus is with you. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus is with you. And uh, again, tell yourself, it is I. Be not afraid. God will not let us go through such a thing without him around to help us. He is there. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, when you are in a situation uh, like the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, so the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. When you are lashed in and out, you know, it is terrible. My brother-in-law, uh, uh, my wife w was a Malaysian, now he's a Singaporean. And uh, there was one time my brother-in-law, my, my wife's brother, took me out to Port Dixon Lighthouse on the boat, go fishing. Oh, I love fishing. You know, if you can't fish anything, I go market and buy. Praise the Lord, you know, to give me some uh, consolation price. And uh, that night, the wind was good, everything was good, but the water was rough. Every time I stand up or sit up, I vomit, seasick. And I said, I cannot fish anymore. And I lie down on the deck and just sleep. You know, the moment I sit up, vomit. The wave was very, very uh, unkind. And very soon, the boatman slept beside me. He should be an experienced boat. <laughs> and then my brother in law came and slept with me. And then the other passenger came and slept. And all together, suddenly all of us slept like sardine, you know. All cannot take the waves. And so we went home empty handed by and by. You know, it's when you struggle against the elements of life, you, you react. Sometimes react uh, foolishly. And I pray that. God calms us down. And the Bible says uh, not only they face a storm, uh, they cried out for fear and said, it is spirit. And again, Jesus gave them the assurance, it is I. Do not be afraid. Captured by the three gospel writers, which is very important as the message bring across to you. Is there anything in life that presently you are walking through that is so turbulent, so very difficult to bring into uh, your ambit of, of, of control. It is I. Do not be afraid. Perhaps some of us need this assuring word from Jesus. It is I. Do not be afraid. Many years ago, I was in Tarakan. Tarakan, you have to fly from Singapore to Jakarta, Jakarta to Balipapan, Balipapan to Tarakan. You know, I was there as a speaker for the Northeast uh, District uh, uh, Mission Conference. 
and uh, I told uh, the, the host, I'm going to come one day early because it's a long journey. I want to take a break. And so that day when I arrived was Wednesday evening, and the meeting starts on Thursday morning. And, uh, and uh, I, I asked the driver, is there any meeting tonight? He said, yes, the home church, the hoses have a prayer meeting. And so I said, can you come to the hotel and pick me up? And I want to attend the prayer meeting. So I attended the prayer meeting. And, uh, and uh, before the prayer meeting ends, uh, uh, the Lord spoke to me. Look at the lady sit, sat there by the window. I said, yes, uh, after the service, you walk there. I have a word for her. And so I followed the leading of the spirit, the service ended, my interpreter followed me, I walked up to the lady, sister, God has a word for you. Tonight, you're going to sleep soundly like a baby. And she cried. She cried, she bawled. I asked the interpreter, did I say anything wrong? Sir, this lady, the husband ran away with another woman and left her and two young children. She's just a housewife. She has no skill, no nothing. She has been staying in the church for the last few months. We do not know what to do and help her, but we let her, you know. So when I spoke that word to her, it is like, it is I. Do not be afraid. Tonight, you're going to sleep soundly like a baby. On Sunday, she came around and looked, where, where, where was I? Where was I? And she came to me again to the interpreter. You know, that night that you spoke to me, you sleep soundly like a baby. I slept through. You know, she cried herself to sleep night after night, night after night for the last few months. You know, nobody can console her, nobody, blah, blah, blah. But when God bring a man all the way from Singapore up to Tarakan, Borneo, and give her the word, she comes down. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, when we begin to see how God can speak to us and allow His Word, you know, uh, things don't happen just by chance. It, if it had to happen, it just happened. But God's Word prevailed. It is I. Do not be afraid. Amen? Hallelujah. Three things I want to leave with you and then I close. One. It is He who sees you and knows your needs. Jesus knows our needs. In the record of Mark 6, and when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary to them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he comes to them walking upon the sea and would have passed by them. Even though Jesus was not in the boat and Jesus was able to see them afar off. You know, it's the Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 11 verse 1. Faith is a substance hope for the evidence of things, not sin. Jesus was able to see and to see into the, the world of the unseen and raise up faith and encouragement through difficult times. May the Lord give us grace. In Psalms it says, If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. I want you to know God is our omnipresence. He watches over us. Can someone say amen, hallelujah? And rebuild the devil who put lies in us and cause us to be fearful and fumble. Number two. It is he who controls all things. It says that you made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. God has everything under control. He allows something to come to our life. There must be a purpose. But for us, as believers in Jesus Christ, hold yourself down. It is I. Do not be afraid. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. God is a good God. God is a good God. And in Psalms, it says, Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. 
Oh, I tell you, God has everything under control. Hallelujah. Finally, as I close here, my third thought with you, it is he who comes at the right time. The right time is always not our time. <laughs> Every time we pray, we expect the answer to our prayer instant. In typical Singapore, you know, everything is instant. Maybe we eat too much instant noodle. We, we, in, uh, the patience is somehow diminished, absence. Don't come to pastors and church elders. Please pray for me. I need more patience. This is a wrong request. Because the Bible teaches, you know, if you come to me as a pastor, pastor, pray for me. I need lots of patience. I will pray the Bible prayer. I will, I will lay hand on you. God, give this fellow more trials. Give him more suffering. Give him more problems. Because the Bible says tribulations works patience. So you better come, don't come to me. I will pray the Bible prayer. And if you scold me, I say, I, look, Bible says tribulations works patience. And why you have extra trouble lately? God is mellowing you down. You mean at my age group? Yes. Whatever group you may be in, God mellows out, calm us down to be a better believer for Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Be a good disciple of Jesus Christ. Three reasons. Jesus come at the right time. God sees us and knows our needs. He knows. Long before you pray to him, he knows. And he knows how to bring antidotes on <laughs> Onto you. So just come down and hear him. Number two, if he tarries, it is only to mold us and develop patience in us. God is our potter. We are the clay. He shaped us. Areas that uh, you don't need to be removed. He has ways to move it and smooth things out so that you can become a better Handmaiden of God, sons of God. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. And number three, he is in full control of all things. Give it to him because we can't control. Better surrender to the God who controls. Can someone say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the assurance of the word of God, it is I, do not be afraid. In closing, I'm going to pray for people here this morning. If you are in the situation that you really need, it is I. Do not be afraid. I want to pray for you. Shall we pray? Everybody close your eyes. Praise the Lord. I like to pray for men and women who say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm in a journey that I really need this assurance of the word. And this morning, thank you. Thank you for the timely word. I want to pray for you men and women here. If, you, if this is your prayer, Lord, it is I. Do not be afraid. You quickly raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you for the hands. Anyone else? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for these many hands that have indicated their faith in you. This morning, Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit to breathe into them the breath of life. And Lord, bring a fresh and a word of assurance. It is I. Do not be afraid. And for many of us, Lord, as we walk into this new week to come, Lord, if we find every, uh, if we happen to encounter any trials and uh, 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 difficulties, Lord, let your word be clear. It is I. Do not be afraid to give us that assurance that you are with us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I commit these wonderful believers to your hand. And in Jesus' name, God's people pray. Amen. Amen.